the secret of multiple wonders is gratitude. When the child is grateful for what he had received in the past, then he will get more. If only we can thank God for what he did last month. He will do more this month. So on your own, just go to the almighty God and bless his holy name. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Worship him. Bless his holy name. Is a miracle working God? Is the one who can perform wonders? He did it last month beyond our expectations. Then why don't we praise him for what he had done in the past? so that we can receive more. Let's praise Him. Let's give Him glory. Let's magnify His holy name. He deserves our praise. It's worthy. It's worthy to be praised. It's worthy to be magnified. It's worthy. There's no one like him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise him from everlasting, everlasting. Everlasting, everlasting, everlasting. Jesus, 
lost my Lord from everlasting.
that wonderful name Jesus Hallelujah that wonderful name Hallelujah Jesus that wonderful name Jesus there is no Thank you, Daddy. Oh, yes, Lord. Daddy asked me to decree. He said, I should just decree anything I want. And so I hereby decree that you will not weep this month. Whatever I've been causing you heartache is terminated right now.
I decree that before the sun rises, you will sing a new song. So I decree that since you were born, this month of September will be the best month you have ever known. I just want to say thank you. Thank you for last month. Thank you for all your mercies, all your goodness, all your provision, all your protection, all the souls saved, all the people healed, all the marvelous testimonies. All the security that you provided, all the journey mercies that you granted, all the marvelous things that you did in all our lives. My Father, my God, I say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, my Father. May your name forever be glorified. Tonight, Father, do what you alone can do. You've promised us multiple wonders. Do what you alone can do. At the end of everything, let us have cause to glorify your name again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. 
I'll shake hands with one or two people and say, Happy New Year. Welcome to Multiple Wonders. And then you may please be seated, except those who are born in the month of uh, September. If you are born in the month of September, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> Do it again. One more time. My Father, my God, I commit your children born in the month of September into your hands. September is the ninth month of the year. And nine is three times three. So I'm asking Lord God Almighty, concerning this your children, let their blessing be in triples. Let their miracles be in triples. Let their breakthroughs be in triples. Let their anointing be in triples. And let their hallelujah be in triples. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Shout another hallelujah. You may please be seated. Uh, the convention of the youth and young adults is next month. from October the 2nd to the 6th. And their theme is Enlarge. And I say, oh, what kind of topic is that? Well, when you come, you will learn about enlarging your coast, enlarging your vision, Enlarging your capacity to rejoice. So make sure you come and you'll be mightily blessed. Because this is a special Holy Ghost service for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. There will be no Shiloh hour on Monday since this month is for them. There will be divine encounter, but there will be no Shiloh hour. Uh, some people have asked me about the dormitories. The largest one, which can accommodate 200 people, um, all amenities included, is approximately 100 million each. Um, so it seems that's where we are going to be concentrating most of the time. Um, I will be expecting your assistance. Those who have already reached out to us, the Almighty God will bless you more than you expect so that you will be able to help me more than you've already done. And those who have not done anything, I hope uh, after the multiple wonders of today, you will be in a position to do something in Jesus' name. Oh, thank you, Father. Exodus 15, verse 11. Exodus 15, verse 11. We want to talk about multiple wonders. We want to thank God for the 
choir. They seem to be getting better by the day. You better clap. <laughs> Many of us can't sing. <laughs> and God has blessed us with those who can sing, so we must appreciate them. We thank God for the marvelous testimonies we have heard. But uh, your own is going to be bigger than that. And we thank God for the lady who led us in the first sermon. Thank you for all those beautiful testimonies. Exodus 15 verse 11. He's talking about our God. And he says, Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? A single wonder is enough. Like we were told by the one who gave the first talk. Because a wonder is that which causes you to wonder. A wonder is that which causes you to open your mouth and you can't close it. And in the name that's above every other name, every one of you will experience a wonder tonight. So why on earth we God perform multiple wonders. Why? Oh, so many reasons. I will just pick maybe one or two of them. But number one is to show his supremacy over and above all his enemies. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 8, Ecclesiastes 5, verse 8, tells us that God is higher than the highest. So when he wants to show the enemy in particular that he's higher than they, then he does multiple wonders. For example, Consider God versus Pharaoh. In those days, Pharaoh was the biggest king around. And so God decided to show him that somebody is greater than somebody else. And so he arranged for a competition. And if you read Exodus chapter 7, uh, you, and you, you just read from verse 10 to 25, Exodus 7, 10 to 25, you see certain things happening. For example, Moses threw down his rod, he became a serpent, or oh, the magicians of Egypt said, <laughs> Uh, was that we too can do that? They threw down their, their own rods, their rods became serpents. And the serpent of God swallowed all the serpents of the magicians and then became a rod again. Now that's a wonder that a rod became a serpent is a wonder that a serpent can swallow other serpents. That's another wonder. So there's good there's news for those who are competing with you back home. Uh, let them get all their magic together. By the time you get home, one rod will be swallowing up other rods.
And then you find Moses changing water to blood. And uh, the magician said, Oh, we can do the same thing. And it, they did it. And then by the time you get to Exodus chapter 8 from verse 1 to 7, Exodus 8 from verse 1 to 7, um, Moses brought forth frogs out of the rivers. And the magician said, oh, we can do that. And they did. So there was round one, round two, round three. Then God said, no problem. <laughs> Let's move to round four. Exodus chapter 8 from verse uh, 16 to 19. Exodus 8, 16 to 19. And uh, Moses produced lies just by smiting the rod of the lion with the rod. And all the sand became lies. The magician tried and they said, ah, no, <laughs> we can't do this. We surrender. And God said, we're only around four. We're going to run 10. I will show you that I am far, far superior to you. You know the rest of the story. By the time the competition was over, there had been 10 wonders. And the Almighty God has shown the enemy that is at least seven more rounds superior to the magicians of Egypt. By the time God finished round 10, it was Pharaoh who was begging the children of Israel, please go. I was telling one of my children not too long ago, he wanted to know, Daddy, why don't you fight? Because he had seen some people who misbehaved, who should be dealt with. And I told him a story. I said, when I was younger, I was a boxer. I'm, I'm sure you, heard, or you already knew that. And my coach told me, when you go into that ring, you must not go to win by points. You must knock out your opponent. He said, uh, I said, why? He said, because when you have a competition, there will be three judges. And the judges can be bribed. So if they are going to decide who wins on points, they could say the opponent won. But if we knock out the opponent, then, then there's nothing anybody can say. They will see who is the winner. So he says, when you go into that ring, make sure at the end of the fight, there's only one fellow standing, and that fellow will be you. I said, that's why I don't fight. Because the moment I begin to fight, <laughs> the fight will not end until only one fellow will be standing. And I want to decree to you today all those forces fighting against you before the sun rises tomorrow you'll be the one standing.
The Almighty God performed multiple wonders to subdue permanently his enemies. I love the testimony of Kabesi. <laughs> he sent the first one. The God of Adebo, he knocked him down. Never to rise again. He sent the second one down. The third one. The fourth one. The fifth one. <laughs> I like that. The next time I hear your own testimony, <laughs> it will be similar to that. The reason number two why God performs multiple wonders is to establish what I talked to you yesterday during the Holy Communion, the law of substitution. The law of substitution in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 8, Proverbs 11, verse 8 says, the righteous is delivered out of trouble, the wicked cometh instead. In plain language, if death is about to swallow the righteous, God will say, no, 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 no. Death, open your mouth. He will pull out the righteous and then look for the wicked and say, uh -huh. Death, you want a victim? Take this one. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 21 to 23, Exodus 4, 21 to 23, God said to Pharaoh, Israel is my son. Let my son go. If you don't let my son go, I will kill your son. There'll be an exchange. In Exodus 14, because I mentioned it briefly yesterday, uh, if you want to hear the full sermon on the law of substitution, I preach it first when I was a lecturer at the University of Lagos in the 1970s. So I won't be preaching that sermon tonight. I just want to give you some illustrations. In Exodus chapter 14, from verse 21 to 28, Exodus 14, 21 to 28, the Red Sea opened. The children of Israel passed through on, on dry ground. And the sea was wondering what's happening now. People are just trapped near over me, hey, God says, hey, see, take it easy. There's a substitution coming. And all the enemies of the children of Israel, they were in the middle of the Red Sea, and the sea closed again. Or you take Daniel chapter 6, another classical example. They threw Daniel into the den of lions. The lions saw the Daniel coming. They thought, ah, here comes food. God said, no, don't touch this one. It's a son of the lion of Judah. The lions were upset. God said, take it easy. Substitution is coming. The following morning, they pull out Daniel. And then all those who threw Daniel in they came down to the den of lions, and the lions had a good meal. Hmm. In Acts chapter 12, because there will be some of you who say, oh, that's, that can only happen in the Old Testament. It can happen in the New Testament because we are now in the age of grace. Hmm. But when you read Acts, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, from verse 5 to 24. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, from verse 5 to 24. The Bible tells us that a king made an arrangement to kill Peter 
by the following morning. And God moved in <clears throat> and brought out Peter. The following morning, they came and they found that the prison doors were securely locked and uh, Peter had escaped. So the king said, okay, all the soldiers who were guarding him, kill them. It was Peter that was supposed to die the following morning. It was the guards that died. And then uh, God said, hey, wait a minute. Uh, those people who were merely doing guard duty, what about the king that threw Daniel in? So he made the arrangement for worms to eat the king so that death had sufficient uh, substitution. So why are you telling us this? It is because there might be some people who have made up their mind that the only way you can have children is over their dead bodies. And so they will die. Because we are going to have your children. So we, it's not, see, some of us do not fully understand. Christianity. We, many of us don't fully understand the fact that, yes, Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God, but he's also the Lion of the tribe of Judah. And I've said it before, he, when he says, be gentle as a dove, he, that's in a certain situation. Because he added quickly, be wise as a serpent. Anyone who says you will not reach your goal, the law of substitution will apply. That's just to clear the ground. That's introduction. Don't worry, I'm not going to take too much time because we need to pray tonight because we are going home with multiple wonders. <laughs> Let's go to Sarah because tonight is specially for those trusting God for the fruit of the womb. How many wonders were given to Sarah. Genesis chapter 18 from verse 9 to 14. Genesis 18, 9 to 14 tells us about, you know, God paying Sarah a visit and uh, making a promise. By this time next year, you'll be carrying a son. But wonder number one, because Sarah laughed. Wonder number one, as we discover in Romans chapter 4, verse 19, Romans 4, 19, the body of Abraham was already dead. It was already 100 years old. It was a long time. He had sex last. But the Bible says God quickened his dead body, brought it back to life. The womb of Sarah was already dead. The Bible said so. She was 90. God quickened her womb. Wonder number two. She gave birth to a child called laughter. That's wonder number three. And according to Genesis chapter 21, 
from verse 1 to 7, Genesis 21, 1 to 7, the Bible says, Sarah herself said, who would have thought that Sarah will give birth to a child? Which is good news for somebody already. Those of you have, that have been written up that you, they say you can never have a child, get ready for a wonder. But wonder number four. In Genesis 25, from verse 21 to 26, Genesis 25, 21 to 26, the one child, Isaac, produced the first ever set of twins. That's a wonder. But they were not ordinary twins. The Almighty God said, the twins will become two nations. Two nations coming from one womb. He said, uh, of the two nations, one will be less than the other. Okay. When you read Genesis 32 from verse 1 to 6, Genesis 32 from verse 1 to 6, you discover that the lesser of the two had a bodyguard of 400 men. I'm <laughs> I must be a great man. Because I've told you before, the first time a president visited us here for a congress, he brought 250 bodyguards. So the lesser of the two had a bodyguard of 400. That means <laughs> he had more bodyguards than a president. What about the bigger of the two? If the lesser is that big, oh, the bigger of the two became a nation. A nation that when the nation was leaving Egypt in Exodus chapter 12, verse 37, Exodus 12, verse 37, consisted of 600,000 men without counting children. Ha ah, The Lord asked me to tell somebody. And when the children of Israel were on their way to the promised land and they needed meat, the wind blew and brought in quails. So he asked me to tell somebody, in this your time of difficulties, the wind will blow. Sarah was considered impossibly barren. God gave her multiple wonders until she became the mother of nations. Consider Hannah. The, my daughter who spoke somehow must have spied my note <laughs> spiritually. Anna asked for only one child. First Samuel chapter 1 from verse 9 to 20. For Samuel 1, 9 to 20. And she said, give me that boy and I give it back to you. I just want it to say that I too had a child. The Almighty God gave her the one child and gave her five extra. Five extra. That's more wonders. But God didn't stop there. The one that Anna gave to God, God turned to a prophet. 
for Samuel chapter 3, verse 19 to 21. For Samuel 3, 19 to 21. And since God has given me freedom to decree tonight, I decree to somebody, your Samuel is on the way. Samuel wasn't an ordinary prophet. She was the first king maker of Israel. For Samuel chapter 9, from verse 17 to 27. First Samuel 9, 17 to 27. And then for Samuel chapter 10, from verse 1 to 25. For Samuel 10, from verse 1 to 25. There is only one fellow that is greater than a king. That's the king maker. Samuel was the first king maker in Israel. How would you like it if tonight God gives you a child that sometimes in the future, whenever they want to elect a president. They say, go and ask him. But he wasn't just the king maker. He was also the king remover. You know, <laughs> you can make a king and if you misbehave, the king can get your head cut off. But in the case of Samuel, in 1 Samuel chapter 15 from verse 1 to 29, 1 Samuel 15 from verse 1 to 29, he spoke a word. And the king lost his kingdom. From the womb of Hannah, Came six children, one of them a prophet, one of them a kingmaker, one of them a king remover, multiple wonders. I have good news for all of you trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Every child that shall be conceived as a result of tonight's meeting will not be ordinary. Yeah. And let's move on quickly and discuss, just like uh, one of the people before me referred to. Let's talk about wonders in the physical. In Second King chapter twenty. Ah, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm sure you know there's something called vision. And when your eyes are wide open, you are not sleeping. And all of a sudden, you see things. Some had happened in the past, some in the present, and so on. But suddenly, I've seen a vision. I have seen a large crowd of little children. There's something peculiar about them. They all have a name that means the door opener. In Yoruba, Olusina. As a first baby that opens the womb after a long period of barrenness. 
Ah, thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy said that is going to happen next convention. I know what? He asked me to say, how many of them do I want as twins? So how many do you want me to ask for? All right, let me ask for 3,000 twins. In 2 Kings chapter 20, from verse 1 to 11. Congratulations, leave her alone. She just received her own set of twins. In 2 Kings chapter 20, from verse 1 to 11. Ezekiah was sick. And God sent his prophet. Go and tell him, you're going to die. You're not going to leave. Put your house in order. And the king said, hey, God sent you uh, to tell me that I would die. Uh, uh. He said, God, I'm not ready to go yet. <laughs> You must remember, I've been serving you very well. Now, I still want to serve you more. And God told the man of God, who was just coming out of the palace, go back. Tell her. I go and tell him. I've changed my mind. Now, that's a wonder. Because it is written. Psalm 119 verse 89 Psalm 119 verse 89 Forever, O Lord Thy word is settled And in Psalm 33 From verse 8 to 9 Psalm 33 from verse 8 to 9 It is written Once God has spoken It is done But now God says I've changed my mind Go back and tell him. I'm not going to die now. That's a wonder. God says, I postpone the appointment because it is written in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews 9, 27. It is appointed unto man wants to die. We will, we will all go one day or the other. But God says, I postpone that appointment. And I decree in the name that's above every other name, any one of you here who has an appointment with death, that appointment is postponed. I'm sure some of you remember this, this the testimony of one papa, Papa Okeo, one of the the great man of God who came to me one day and said that sir I met a prophet when I was 44 years old who told me everything that will happen to me in details and then told me that I would die at the age of 84 and he said I was glad then I was only 44 he told me I was going to live for another 40 years and all manners of blessings will follow. And everything he said came to pass. He said, I've come to you now because I have two weeks to go. So I just want you to pray for me before I depart. I said, Baba, you are born again now because he had given his life to Jesus. Are you really ready to die? He said, well, not really, but uh, that prophet is sure fire. <laughs> Everything he said 
came to pass. So I'm ready for this one. Do you want to die? Let me ask somebody here tonight. Do you want to die? <laughs> so I told Papa, I said, there is a greater prophet here. And you are not going to die until you, I release you. Papa said, is that why? I said, trust me. Papa has bought a little bungalow here on the camp, two bedroom. If you see his mansion <laughs> in Ijebode, you, you can be lost there. But he wanted to live on holy land so that when the death comes, he can go from holy land to holy heaven. <laughs> he can continue to live here, attended the Bible college. You, you never can beat him to the morning prayer. When he was just a few weeks to 100, he sent for me. I'm ready to go now. Please release me. And since myself, I don't want to be, I don't want to live to be 100, I said, well, reluctantly, you can go. Every one of you here today, I hear by decree, none of you will die young. But the wonder of Ezekiah didn't end there. God, because of him, reversed the son. Told the son to go back. In Joshua chapter 10, from verse 12 to 14, Joshua chapter 10, from verse 12 to 14, When Joshua was fighting and the sun was about to set, he commanded the sun to stand still. And he did. And the Bible recorded it as a wonder. But in the case of Ezekiah, it was a bigger wonder. The sun was asked to go back on his track. The meaning of that is the irreversible was reversed. Like my daughter who preached mentioned, in the case of uh, Lazarus, he's been dead and buried four days. God brought him back, reversed the irreversible. In the name that's above every other name, Everything that you had lost shall be restored back to you. At least some of you remember the testimony of, of one of our sisters. Her friend had cancer of the breast. And by the way, I, 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 I need to warn also. We're again beginning to take some of the miracles of God for granted. You had several testimonies here tonight. You heard of uh, cancer disappearing. You didn't cheer God the way you should. That's not a small matter. Some of the testimonies we had here tonight, they are testimonies that we ought to stand and praise God about. We did not. We are taking some of these things for granted. It doesn't happen like this. We had the testimony of somebody whose kidney had failed completely and it merely took Holy Communion 
and God gave him a brand new kidney. You didn't shout. You didn't appreciate that. I, I understand because God is doing so, so many mighty things. So we're beginning to think that, well, that's the way it should be. That's not the way he does this because we receive the mercy. We receive the mercy. Let me hear you shout another hallelujah. Anyway, so there was, uh, thank you very much. So there was this uh, sister whose friend had cancer of the breast, and the doctor said they have to remove the cancer, and I mean, remove the breast. And they removed the breast, and it, uh, um, my daughter got to her and said, Don't worry, they removed the breast, but I have an handkerchief here that my father had prayed on and laid it on the breast. And uh, <laughs> two weeks later, a brand new breast was there. <laughs> you, 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 had, you had the testimony of one of my daughters who had cancer of the voice box and they had to remove the voice box at uh, UCH. Remove voice box, that means you can't speak anymore. And we went there and prayed. And for quite some time, anytime she, needed, she wanted to communicate, it, it can only be by either writing or by texting. And then one day, I traveled, and I returned. I think I came from America or something. And as I was coming out of the door of the, I mean, coming out of the car, I saw a woman rolling on the floor. Oh, what's happening, lady? And then she looked at me, and I recognized her, and she said, Daddy, I am the one I can talk again. Do you believe that what is humanly impossible to reverse, what you lost, that is supposed to be lost forever, is going to be restored back to you? If you believe that, let me hear you shout hallelujah. Let's, let's talk about multiple wonders in the material sense of the word. Remember, barrenness is another word for fruitless efforts. When you try and try and nothing comes forth. And my daughter again came ahead and spoke about Peter. When you read the story of Peter in Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11, Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11, several wonders happened to Peter that day. Number one, there were two boats. God chose Peter's. We are many here tonight, and God is going to choose someone to be the first. The first to receive multiple wonders. Who is that one? <laughs> and then your hallelujah should be louder than that of your neighbor. <laughs> Peter fished all night and caught nothing Jesus chose his boat of all the boats 
And then he threw one net and caught so much fish that his boat could not carry it. He needed help. That's another wonder. When I make a decree, please understand. If only you can believe, it will come to pass in your life. And so I'm decreeing. I've decreed it before. I'm decreeing it afresh now. One day, when you are taking your money to the bank, you will need somebody to help you. It reminds me of a son of mine, a tailor. Incidentally, is the one who sold what I'm wearing. <laughs> when in 1981 or two, I be, well, after I became general overseer, and he joined the church, he said, I am a good tailor, but I don't have money. If you buy the material, I will sew for you, free. I said, is that so? You said, yes. I said, in that case, I decree. One day, when you take your money to the bank, the manager will send for you. I say, what job do you say you are doing? And for a long time, nothing seemed to happen. And somehow, my tailor was brought into the attention of the highest authorities. And Nigeria was sending a contingent, I think, to the Olympics. And they chose him to sew the dress. And when the government paid him, and he took the money to the bank, the manager sent for him. Uh, this amount is not the usual thing we see from a tailor. What work do you say you are doing? I decree in the name that's above every other name. One day in the future, when you say you want to withdraw your money from the bank, the manager will fall down and beg you. <laughs> Not only did Peter have a major breakthrough, do you know his destiny was rearranged that day? Because Jesus Christ told him, from now on, you won't be fishing for fish, you'll be fishing for men. It doesn't matter what was your original destiny. It's a saying that it is the Englishman who made pencil who also made eraser. It is the almighty God who wrote your destiny. And he has the right to say, I change it. As the Lord lives, who has called me, it doesn't matter what your original destiny may be, you are going to end very well. Because Peter ended up healing the sick, casting out demons with his shadow alone. He was supposed to die a fisherman. No, we are still talking about him today. And there are more houses, more cathedrals built in the name of Peter 
than any other fellow you can think of. Oh, I decree again. I'm using the opportunity my father had given me today. I decree again. You will not die unknown. Okay, now, so let, because of time, let's talk quickly about wonder spiritual. And we will take the case of Paul. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone that very soon your song will be, I never knew. He will honor me this way. I never knew. He will honor me this way. I never knew. He will honor me this way. Honor me this way. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Go ahead, sing it one more time. I never knew. It is done in Jesus' name. We want to talk about wonder spiritual. Oh, thank you, Father. Someone asked me to tell somebody, I mean, God, Daddy asked me to tell someone, rather, that you should remember the story of Job. He lost all his children and got all of them back. The Lord asked me to tell you all the pregnancies you have lost, He will restore them all. <laughs> I like this one. The Lord asked me to tell someone that when you stand on this altar to give your testimony before you speak people will already be clapping I say I want to talk about wonder spiritual and we will use Paul as an example. In 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15, Paul himself called himself the chief of sinners. Was bad. And then by the time you get to 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 2, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 2, he said, I wronged no man. And that's a wonder. How could you say I wronged no man? Oh, because the blood of Jesus Christ has wiped away all, I, all his sins. Because when a man is in Christ, a new creature, all things are pass away. All things have become new. Oh, salvation is a mighty wonder. But it didn't end there. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 5, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 5, he became one of the chiefest apostles. The one who was chairman when they were killing Stephen 
became one of the chiefest apostles, wonders. And in Acts chapter 19, from verse 11 to 12, Acts 19, 11 to 12, it was said about Paul, not about any other apostle, I mean concerning any other apostle other than Paul, that God performed special miracles by the hands of Paul. And from his body, handkerchiefs, aprons were taken to the sick and they were healed. And the captives were set free. That's a wonder. But it didn't end there. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, Let me say amen to this one before. <laughs> the Lord said, there is someone here. He said, you are going to be a great star. He said, your friends will be stars. But you will shine far, far above them all. <laughs> okay. Allow me to say amen to this one too. The Lord says, in summer, the sun rises early and set late. So there's plenty of light during summer. The Lord asked me to tell somebody, the rest of your life, it's going to be a long summer. In Acts chapter 19, from verse 13 to 17, Acts 19, 13 to 17, the Bible says, when some people try to copy Paul to ask a demon to get out, the demon said, uh -uh, I know Jesus. I know Paul. You know the meaning of that? His influence was recognized in hell. Even forces of darkness recognized him as special. Can I give you an illustration? Probably I've told you before. Years ago, they brought a very, very violent madman to the camp. Very, very violent. In those days, they, they were bringing them regularly. Because they know if they bring them, within a couple of days, they'll be normal again. This one was very violent. And they, so they called me because I sent some pastors who were praying and trying to cast out the demon, etc., etc. And as I came into the room, the demon in the man said, Ah! Why do they have to bring you? They should have, should have allowed me to deal with these ones. I said, I don't want to hear. Just get out. And since they brought you in, I will go. I pray for somebody here today. From tonight onward, when demons see you coming, 
they will run. God wants to take you from the mighty clay and put your feet on the rock to stay. Psalm 40 from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 40, 1 to 3. He wants to pick you from the dunghill and place you among kings. 1 Samuel chapter 2. Verse 7 to 8, First Samuel 2, 7 to 8. We're talking of wonders. He wants to make sure that when you are passing through a, a river of fire, it won't burn you. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. And he can make a way where there's no way for you. He's a God of wonders. You see, all that God is waiting for is how you respond to him. Let me focus a little bit more. Now I'm, I'm concluding. On those of you who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. God expects you to be hospitable. You should, you should take note of that. Because when you consider the story of Sarah, some men were passing by, the husband invited them in. And the wife cooperated in preparing food for these strangers. There are some of you women, when your husband wants to do the work of God, you, you discourage him. You say, are you the only one in the church? Be God's partner. My daughter mentioned that one. Peter surrendered his boat for God to use, for God to use. He became a partner. That's what Hannah did. Give me a son and I give him back to you. I be your partner. A lady gave a testimony last month, the one who was carrying four children. She heard that there was going to be a meeting of partners of Daddy Jew, a day out with the God of the Jews. She decided to come. Let me join them. She did. God re responded for children. Be his partner and please be holy. Because in the text that we read at the beginning, Exodus 15, verse 11. Is glorious in holiness. I've told you before, my God is not going to give his children to those who are sinners. And you've had the testimony before of a sister who came trusting God for the fruit of the womb years ago. And then the following year she came. She said, they told me that if you pray for me, uh, I will become pregnant. They even told me that if you lay hands on me, it's most likely I will fall on the ground. You know, those were days gone by when I used to pray for everybody who came. And uh, <laughs> we didn't control the power flow at that time. So when we lay hand, people fall on the ground. And, but after, <laughs> after the crowd grew, we discovered we couldn't do that anymore because there is no space. 
He said, oh, why did you control the part? Not that we controlled it. Um, we decided to release it in a different form. That's why when we wave our hands, your handkerchief become anointed. She said, they said, if you lay hands on me, I will fall. <laughs> well, let somebody shout hallelujah. I don't have to come to touch you now. God has promoted me. And he will promote you too. <laughs> Said I fell. And see, I didn't become pregnant. And all of a sudden, God said, ask her. How many boyfriends has she, apart from her husband? Ah, how do I ask this question? Because this is, I mean, she's a highly respectable lady. I almost stammered. Sorry, Mo, it's not me, but uh, <laughs> God said I should ask you, Ma, uh, apart from your husband, uh, how many boyfriends have you? She said six. Ah. If the baby comes, how are we going to know the father? <laughs> you want a jubabi? I told her, you need to be holy. My God is a holy God. There's nothing rotten in him. If you are not ready to live holy, forget it. You can get, if you want your child, go, go to the Babalawo. He will give you one. He won't bother about how you live. It's just that after you got the baby, you will know you got something else. Because it's only the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow. Tonight, my pastors are ready. They will be praying for every lady trusting God for the fruit of the womb. They are going to lay hands on you. They have my permission to do so. They have enough anointing to settle the matter. But if you are not holy, they may lay hands on you until all, your, all the hair on your head fall off nothing will happen. So if you know that you are still living in sin, and yet you don't want to miss the multiple miracles of tonight, please come. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. His blood will wash away all your sins, and the way will be opened for the multiple wonders to be released unto you. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from one to 12. Before I say 12, make sure you're already standing in front of me here, and then we'll pray for the salvation of your soul. And that's not only for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. It's also true for those who are trusting God for mighty breakthroughs, you want an end to fruitless efforts in your life? Come and give your life to Jesus Christ. His blood will wipe away your sins and your wonders will begin. I'm counting now one. Two. Three. Four.
Pai. Six. Seven. Eight. Ten. Eleven. Okay, thank you. Now, those of you who are still on the way, keep coming. Those of you already in front, cry to Jesus Christ now and ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to forgive all your sins. Ask him to wash away everything, every rotten thing you have ever done and give you a brand new beginning. Promise him you will serve him for the rest of your life. Go ahead, talk to the Lord. And please, the rest of us, let's stretch our hands towards all the people here and pray that the one who saved our souls we save their own souls also. Let's pray for them for just two minutes and, and then I will round up the prayer. Those of you on the way, hurry up now because I'm about to pray for salvation. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Savior, I want to bless your holy name for these, your children, who have responded to your word. Thank you for sending out your word and bringing these people to the foot of the cross. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them in Jesus' name. Let your blood wash away their sins in Jesus' name. Father, I'm praying that tonight you will save their souls. You will receive them into the family of God. And from now on, any time they cry unto you, answer them by fire. And tonight, let them also be partakers of the multiple wonders you are about to release. Do this for us, Lord, and we will give you all the glory forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward. From tonight onward, by the grace of God, I'll be praying for you. So I need your names, I need your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will give you a card to fill very quickly. You fill the cards, give it back to them, and then you can return to your seat. 
Congratulations. We wait for you until you are finished before we proceed further. Thank you. So maybe you want to write down your prayer points very quickly. Number one, of course, we want to thank God for past wonders that is performed in your life. That you are see our life today is a wonder of God. When you sleep and you wake up, it's a wonder. The enemy does not want you to wake up. And thank him for the past wonders. And then you call on the Almighty God to subdue all forces against you. Just like he subdued Pharaoh and all his hosts. And then number three, and if anyone wants to stand in the way of your own wonders, God should apply the law of substitution. Father, apply the law of substitution. The righteous is delivered out of trouble. The wicked goes instead. And then number four, you say, Father, let my laughter begin. Let my laughter begin. And for those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, you want to tell him, Father, send my twins. And for those of us who are trusting God for something else, you can say, let barren become a stranger to my family. Let barrenness become a stranger to my family. And then all of us can pray and say, Father, Give me my multiple breakthroughs. And then you say, Father, promote me supernaturally physically materially maritally and spiritually And then, finally, your own personal request. The altar is open. You have 
approximately 15 minutes to pray before we begin to lay hands. So make the prayer intense because we have a short time. Go to the Almighty God and cry unto Him intensely. Thank Him. Ask Him to subdue all those forces against you. And if any force or forces should rise up against you, you should apply the law of substitution. Call on God to let your laughter begin. Call on him to make sure that barrenness will become a stranger to your family. Tell him you want promotions, supernatural promotions, wonderful promotions, physically, materially, maritally, spiritually. Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The Almighty God will subdue all your enemies. If anybody is planning evil against you, they will be the substitute for you. Your mighty breakthroughs will begin now. Your laughter will begin. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will no longer know sorrow. Barrenness will become a stranger to your family. Your breakthroughs will come in manifold.
your promotion will be rapid. God will surprise you. Your testimonies will be marvelous. The God of wonders will turn you to a wonder. He will use you to perform wonders. So shall it be. And you too, you will serve the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's return to our seat very quickly. As quickly as possible. Tonight, in addition to laying hands on uh, those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb, we will be anointing our children who are graduating from the Redeemer's University. So I hope they are already positioned. The senior pastors who will anoint them are already there. We've already blessed the oil and that oil will never run dry on you in Jesus' name. Now our pastors will please take their position. Um, I believe some of them Anyway, you know where you are going to stand. So, pastors, please let's get ready for the lay on of hands. We'll start by laying hands on all those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And then after that, we'll make further announcements. Please, pastors, take your position quickly. God bless you. And in the meantime, the choir will begin to worship God to bring down the anointing of God. And those who are going to anoint the students, the graduates, you please take position too, so we can finish these things as quickly as possible. Pastors, they are waiting for you. Oh, glory be to God. There will be no need to rush. They will attend to every one of you. We will not stop until all have been attended to. Thank you, pastors. Can we move a little faster, please? There's no need to rush. They will attend to everybody. Please let everything be done orderly. Thank you. Pastors, can we move a little faster? All right. Over to you, choir. Jesus 
is here. Miracle walking God. Miracle walking God. Omnipotent God. Jesus is here. Miracle walking God. Miracle walking God. Hallelujah. Ancient of days, miracle walking God, only potent one. Jesus is He, miracle walking God, miracle walking God. Anyone else who wants hands laid on Him or her, you know, maybe you want. Uh, breakthrough in your business or in your career or in any way that you want hands laid on you, you too can come forward now. Continue, please, choir. So anybody who wants hands laid on him, not only barren women, anybody else, you can come now. said at the beginning of the service that the secret to multiple wonders is gratitude. The time has come now for us once again to show our appreciation to God. So shall we very quickly take our thanksgiving offering. And this time round, Show God that you really appreciate what he had already done for you. Not so much uh, by what you give, even though that is very important. But by dancing, by rejoicing, show him that you are a cheerful, grateful giver. So, you take your offering, and you dance to the nearest basket to you, and then you, you can celebrate with one or two people so that together our gratitude will be multiplied and our wonders will also be multiplied. If you are ready, the musician will continue, and you go ahead and down to the nearest basket to you. Over to you, brethren.
Father and our God, we say thank you. Thank you for visiting us again tonight. Oh Lord, thank you for prophesying to our future. Thank you because we know by the time we get home, oh, those enemies will have already been subdued. And before the end of this month, oh, some of us will already be saying, oh, is it true? Or oh, am I dreaming? Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, bless the offerings of your children. Sanctify it, Lord. Use it for your glory. And please, Daddy, for the rest of this year, let all of us just dance for joy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Ah, who got the biggest wonder tonight? Let me hear you shout the biggest hallelujah. 